Hello YouTube, welcome back to The Sea Will Claim Everything. I have no idea what we were doing last time. Let's talk to Stavros again. Um, did we ask him about violence? Uh, believe that the only yeah I remember this. Let's see. The sea. Sometimes I've turned away from the sea to be able to think. It inspires me, but it can also put me into a trance. It is overwhelming and perfect. Why? Which is why it is also the source of so many sayings and metaphors. History, it has been said, repeats itself. But I believe that th that is a misunderstanding. History is not a process, but a result. The patterns we must observe are the patterns of wealth and war, thought and polity. If we may understand the rules to which these matters are bound, then history may be changed. History will only repeat so long as we do not understand its machinery. That's an interesting perspective, Stavros. You are a philosopher and a tree. Lord Erzin, he calls himself a follower of reason, but in truth it is false reason that he follows, a hollow construct of language and customs that allow for none of the principles of reason. That sucks. The Oracle. I don't know if the Oracle speaks the truth. Can the future be predicted? Unlikely. But if the ancients are to be believed, many of the Oracle's prophecies came true. Perhaps it is less a matter of foreknowledge than of extrapolating from current knowledge. Perhaps that is what it means to be a seer. To see not the future, but the present. That is also an interesting perspective. Have you seen Niam? Oh, you know Niam and the? That's wonderful. They're a lovely couple, aren't they? Anyway, yes, Niam passed through here a while ago. She said she was going to the hills of Helios. And he marks it on my map. Timber Tyrant, tell me about him. He killed your people. One of the most tragically ironic. Did you know that the Timber Tyrant was not his real name, but only a mocking nickname given to him by his opponents? And yet, for all his conquests and his so-called glory, his true name has been forgotten. He sought to make himself the greatest king who ever lived, and now he's only half-remembered story of barbarism and futility. That sucks for him, doesn't it? Let me just remind myself of my goals. Find Niam, heal Underhome, Ending Foreclosure, Translator, Adapter, Doctor, Ingredients for Super Recovery, or Pulse Owl. Focus on Niam. Hills of Helios. A tree. It has stood here for more than 2,000 years. It's older than many legends would consider ancient that you would consider ancient, that I would consider ancient. Gain doesn't care what you think, only what I think. Tourists are often surprised to see cactuses growing on the Isle of the Sun, but they are indigenous. Interesting. Um, never, tr never trust these trees. Flowers. Flowers share a complex root system and a simple description. Huh. More cacti. Um, so Niam is definitely not here, but directions. Camp! The box contains supplies, it's almost empty. Soil and water samples. A zinc lantern, didn't know that was a thing. Remains of a meal involving corned beef. Moab is my wash pot too, wash harder by Stephen Fry. I'm gonna go ahead and doubt that's a real book. What's this? Toilet paper, the astute camper's most important resource. Terrible things have happened to reckless fools who did not take enough with them. They had to wipe with leaves. God forbid. Nothing except a sleeping bag. And ant poo is great for making fires with. That's lovely. Niam, I found her. She appears unharmed. Good. Hi. Hi. Are you Niam? Yes. Yeah, I'm okay. Great. There's nothing you have to worry about, though it's very sweet of that to send you. But he has enough on his mind. He doesn't need to worry about me. Sorry if you hear that. I'm uh, trying to adjust myself a little bit. The 
Has he told you the story of his name? No, I should have known. He doesn't want people's pity. Worries about being seen as one of those people who use their personal tra tra tragedies as rhetorical tools. But it's worth knowing. I'll tell you on the way to Underhome. Cool. Help. She needs my help. Great. Uh, pollution and magical disturbances I came to measure are far more widespread than I thought they would be, which is why I've taken so long. If you could nip over to a couple of places and take readings for me, I'd be very grateful. Here, I've set up the quadricorder, so all you need to do is press a button. I need readings from Thera Beach and Mataki Beach, on the opposite sides of the aisle. Why are you in the hills of Helios? Beautiful area, isn't it? We came here with the a few years ago. Spent some weeks camping under a tree and cataloging the wildlife. I think that was most of the mo that the words. That was one of the most romantic times in my life. I think. Love, science, and sunshine. What else do you need? That's um a unique but rather nice way of thinking. Readings. I'll have to analyze the data further before I can be certain, but it looks like Lord Urizen's ship is leaving quite the trail of pollutants, both magical and otherwise. If just one ship can do so much damage, I shudder to think what will happen if his proposals about new factories and mines and shipping lanes are implemented. Tell me about Mananan, because I don't know what that is or why I'm asking you. My grandfather? I, I don't know how to help him. I tried to talk to him, but his despair runs so deep. I don't know if there's anything anyone can do until the world changes. That's rather sad. Translator, do you have one? It's broken. I tried talking to a polyphonic crayfish, and it just couldn't handle the input. I'll repair it as soon as I'm back in Underhome. Okay. I've got a quadricorder. Fantastic. So, help Nyam by going to those beaches. Um, right. That's on the map then. Mataki Beach. There's a cave. Well, Anthic Generator Beer, Bolsheviski, Captain's Quadricorder. Poke it. Elevated levels of ionic radiation. That's funny. 74 pollutants. That's not a measure. That's like a number of different kinds. That's terrifying. Uh, let's sniff it now. It smells of technobabble. Can I eat it? No. What does the mouse think? The quadricorder detects the mouse. Mouse's life signs. There we go. Liquid cheese. <laughs> God only knows why you took it. Mouse, what do you think? <laughs> Fair enough. What's over here, though? Bats. Ah! Came with the Cyclops. The eyeball is eyeballing its one eyed friend. Fantastic. Vasilis! Uh, who are you? I am Vasilis the Cyclops. I live in this cave. I lead a simple life with only my pet eyeball, George, and a few good books for company. There's a crisis. I don't understand you, little ones. You're always fighting each other. Relax a little. Live a little. I would love to. Help? No, you don't love, need help. That's good. Timber Tyrant. Uh, only a nickname. Just a bad pun. Yeah. Well, that was, that was productive. Do you have anything I need? Bread and cheese. For when there aren't sailors to eat. Lovely. Extra nitrogen. God. Puns. And other beach. With nowhere to go. So let's click on everything. You could swear this flower was looking at you. The description of this flower seems more textual than usual. Strange, isn't it? A little, yeah. These two flowers smell intensely of magic. Oh, wait, no. I'm looking for the quadricorder. Poke it! High levels of translogic particles detected and 118 pollutants. I'm guessing this place is worse. 
let's go back and visit Niam. Niam! Shit's going down! Um, how do I... Ah, there you go. Okay, cool. Let me know. Yeah, let's, uh... Let's go. I like the Isle of the Sun, but I've got work to do, and I've missed my boyfriend. Speaking of which, I should tell you the story of how he came by his name. I think it matters. Okay. Za was born to Moira and Robert Mysterious Druid. Moira lived in Underholm, and Rupert was a traveling healer. They met in Port Dara, which was a small village then. They fell in love and were married the following year, Robert taking her name. Another year later, Za was born. It is the custom of the people of the Isle of the Moon to hold a naming ceremony for each child, and until the ceremony is held, the child has no true name. It was at this ceremony that disaster struck. The master of ceremonies, who was Moira's grandfather, Rupert, had just begun writing the name the parents had whispered to him. The name began with the letters T-H-E, perhaps it was Theodore, or Theodosius, or Theophilus. But suddenly a terrible sound was heard. It was the island of Caldiste, that sounds familiar, is that in a Greek legend somewhere? Which is now little more than a skeleton. But then there were many towns and villages, and all were lost when the volcano erupted. No one had known what terrible forces lay inside that beautiful island. Moira and Robert knew that a grave danger now threatened the Isle of the Moon. They returned their child to Underholm and made haste for Port Dara to warn the townspeople of what was coming. They were right. The waters rose and nearly destroyed Port Dara. Many lives were lost, but many more would have been lost without Moira and Robert. It is said they raised a barrier of magic to protect the village and beat back the waves. This music is moving. Together they stood in the harbor holding each other's hands and it seemed to those who saw them that nothing could defeat their love. But the sea is ancient and powerful and we are nothing to it but specks of sand. And so the sea claimed Moira and Robert as they say it will claim everything in the end. No one ever learned what name the child was to have been given, except the three letters that had been written down. Moira's father, too, was lost, though some say he threw himself into the waves when he heard of his daughter's fate. And so the child was raised by Underholm and its creatures, who know little of the ways of human, humans, and simply called him the. Later, it became a point of pride and amusement to him, though also always a reminder of his loss. That is horrendously sad. That's the story. What matters most to me, of course, is that he became a good man. He became the man that I love. That's depressing. <laughs>